On this episode of WTF, we're going to tell you all the things you need to know before you try to replace gelatin with agar. Hey, it's Chef Scott. And Janie, and welcome to WTF, where we help you transform food in your kitchen. So remember to subscribe and also stick around for our weekly giveaway. This week, we are going to be talking all about how to replace gelatin with agar. And this is a really common question that we get asked time and time again. I would like to make this recipe, that's animal-based gelatin, into a plant-based recipe. I hear agar is the key to do that <laughs> trick. How do I do it? Um, let's start, Scott, with a little bit about, obviously one is animal-based, one is plant-based, but what are some of the other key differences between gelatin and agar? So that's a great point. One comes from the joints and bones of animals, and the other comes from brown algae. And other than being gelling agents, they're very different in almost every way that you use them. Um, the biggest key difference is going to be how hot you have to heat these and when they set into a gel. So heating up uh, the gelatin and the agar can go up to you know a boiling, but once they start to come down in temperature, the agar is going to set much higher, mm -hmm. which is a, a benefit to it for a lot of people trying to make you know hot gels and things like that. But the gelatin will melt easier, which then lends to a better what we know as flavor release. Yeah. And one of the things that we see a lot on the internet with different recipes is that they just say, oh, just put the agar in where you normally put yeah. gelatin. And it's such, a, it's such bad advice. <laughs> yes. uh, why is that such bad advice? So people <laughs> who generally don't understand what mm -hmm. they're using will try to use it in the exact same way. Mm -hmm. uh, this time, it, or agar is generally said, it's a gelatin replacement, it's a replacement, mm -hmm. and without any further context, so you end up with, uh, people trying to replace everything, including how it's used in the, the method. So mm -hmm. gelatin requires blooming, which basically you just let it sit in water until it hydrates. Uh, you can see it's very easy to do. You just take these sheets. Mm -hmm. You can do it also with uh, powdered gelatin just by sprinkling it over the top. Can you get clumps sometimes? Yes, but that's only if you're you know adding too much for the amount of water. Mm -hmm. The best thing uh, to do with that is just take your time and use an uh, ample amount of water. Now, if I try to do this, right, if I just pour in agar into this water and then I attempt to mix it up because I don't, why would I need a blender? Why would I need uh, <laughs> a hand blender or anything? We're going to get these clumps. Can you sprinkle it over the top and attempt to get it to uh, hydrate that way? You can, but you're going to generally end up with these clumps and it's going to be very difficult to mix out. So the best thing you can do is place the liquid into a blender and then slowly sprinkle it in. That's going to uh, disperse it very evenly and give it the best chance to not clump. Yeah. And the other thing that you know people often ask is, oh, okay, I understand how to use it, but I want to just replace it. Is it a one-to-one? If not, you tell me how much it is. Yes. So can, let's talk about let's talk about replacement ratios and what happens when you replace something one to one agar for gelatin. So since gelatin is always used in different ratios, this is where it gets very difficult. Something like a Jello style dessert, easy to make with gelatin, but then when you replace it one to one, it's so firm with the agar. Then panna cotta, which uses less than a Jello style dessert. How do we replace that? And then into gummies where you use a ton of gelatin, trying to do that with agar is disastrous. So <laughs> you want to try to find a, a base range of ratios, and, and I have a few. So if you're going for something very light like this, it's going to be around, and you're not going to be able to convert. You're going to have to take right. the total weight of the recipe, and you're going to have to do a little bit of math just to figure out where it needs to be. So something like a panna cotta is between 0.5% to 0.7%. So let's say you have a quart of milk in this instance, or soy milk, whatever it happens to be. If you have uh, a quart of that, that is going to be around five grams mm -hmm. to, se uh, to 7.5 grams. That's a great starting point for this. Just delicate, you can cut through it, it'll be very nice. When we get up to this jello, this is where around that 0.75 to 1%, depending on how firm you like it, to get to something that eats like a jello. Then when we go into 
the gummies, the range is so different where I'm using, let's say 70 grams of gelatin. Mm -hmm. If I put 70 grams of agar, one, that's expensive. Yep. Uh, it's a very expensive thing to waste too. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this only ends up being around two to three percent. So for that, you know, one thousand um, grams of liquid, I'm only using, you know, like twenty grams of agar at most, right. and it could even be lower than that, depending on how you like that texture. Yeah. Yeah. And then we get into the texture itself. Yeah. So I know Scott just threw a lot of numbers <laughs> yes. at you. You don't have to write any of this down. Check the link in the description below. We're going to link to just these basic ratios that we put onto a mm -hmm. recipe so that if you are looking at um, a recipe similar to this, you can use these starting ratios. But kind of the point we're trying to get at is that w your ratio really depends on what exactly you're trying to do. Yes. And it could be you know, as little as two you know, versus two as much as 0.75. Yes. So we don't really know, but these are just starting points. Um, and you just brought up a really great point, right? Like we're trying to get that agar as close to gelatin texture mm -hmm. as we possibly can. And I know that you've, you know, prepped these samples so we can take a look at what does one-to-one -one look like? What does it look like when we try to get close? And um, how does that affect flavor, you know, and the eating experience? Yeah, so this is the gelatin jello. So you can see it's crystal clear. That's a great uh, benefit of using ge uh, gelatin, especially if you're using something like a platinum gelatin, you're gonna get that clearest gel possible. Uh, gelatin is slightly elastic. It is, does have brittle qualities, but you can stretch it and it's very soft because we're using a low amount yeah, for this. It's got that jello wiggle that we all, we all know and love. Now, if I do a one-to-one -one replacement, this is by weight. Oh. <laughs> you can see the agar Without the bubbles on top, it's nice and clear. Mm -hmm. A little bit cloudy, but just the sep, like, it'll pop if I... Uh, and that you have to really put your elbow into it <laughs> yeah, to even scoop it out of the bowl. Right, it, it just breaks and yeah. it's very brittle. And you will notice that when you eat it. You will yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. feel that difference in texture. It doesn't even look appetizing. And then if you get to something like this, you'll get a similar texture to the, uh, the gelatin. It's not going to be perfect. It'll never be a one-to-one -one, like texture replacement, mm -hmm. but you could absolutely eat that as yeah. uh, a jello and, and be happy with it. Yeah, I mean, it's still scoopable. It's, it doesn't have that wiggle, but I don't mm -hmm. think you ever will quite get it to that same degree. Be and I think that's one of the common misperceptions that people have as well, that with agar, you will get a gelatin experience, mm -hmm. uh, but you really can't. What we do have is a product uh, not featured on this episode, but we have episodes all about it. It's called Druid's Grow Vegan Gelatin, and that's a blend of carrageenans that's specially formulated in order to give you that texture and mouthfeel of an animal gelatin. Mm -hmm. And that one, I believe, is a one-to-one -one replacement. It is a one-to-one -one replacement, in, in, yes. in the, uh, ratio, not in the method. Yes. Um, <laughs> the method will yeah. also follow the same as the, the agar, where you want to blend it the same way, but you don't have to worry about doing any extra math. It's just a replacement. Yeah. So if you want to check that out, you know, we'll link to it in the description below. All right. Now back to the agar for a second here. We have the penna cottas. Which ones are these again? So these are... Uh, you'll see how, how delicate it is. So panna cotta is a very delicate, very mm -hmm. light in, in gelatin, which then makes it difficult to make something as delicate using uh, agar. Right. So this is the milk. Uh, this is uh, the one-to-one -one replacement. And then on the end okay. is close enough, you know, to, yeah. the, uh, to the original. So we can kind of see this gelatin one looks great. Uh, I'm only going to eat a little bit of it, <laughs> which I dropped in my hand because it's so delicate. <laughs> You'll notice on the second one. Um, this is the one-to-one? -one? Yes, one-to-one. -one. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit more firm. Yep. And definitely... Um, you slicing. You can slice it. You're slicing it. Yes. This is... It's so brittle. It reminds me of... Um, I don't know what it reminds me of, but definitely not panna cotta. It does not taste very good. <laughs> Texture-wise, yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it's going to shred in a way that is it does not feel like panna cotta, where panna cotta melts. And that, that's something we can talk about here, mm -hmm. is kind of that melting point is a big difference between these two. Mm -hmm. The gelatin will melt nice and easily at, mm -hmm. at body temperature, so you get that almost you know melt in your mouth, release of flavor, 
especially with something that has such a little amount, yep. whereas the agar will not melt. So you have to work to make it as fine as possible with yes. as little as possible so that you can attempt to make that without having it be a, a crunchy, <laughs> you know, yeah. kind of. Yeah, this one uh, I feel like I'm almost chewing it. Yes, yeah, the other one is delicate. Okay, this and this one is, is the, the converted ratio. Yep, and you can see it's... It's a much easier scoop. It's not as delicate as the gelatin, but definitely way nicer. Yep, and that should should give you a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And the less agar that you use, mm. the more flavor is going to be released out of it naturally because of you're using less, so there's less things to get trapped in there. Yeah, so definitely I think this is like a pretty good approximation. Mm -hmm. it, again, you're not going to get the same experience, but you know, this is nice. Yes. All right. Um, and I know we did the gummy bears as well, because that one comes up pretty yeah. frequently. People want to make gummies. Which, uh, what are we talking about on the far end here? So the first ones here, we made worms, we made slightly bigger hearts, we made okay. some bears. These are There's a couple gelatin. things to note. Yep, those are gelatin. Ooh, which one so I'll take the green one. And we can show uh, just how stretchy they are. Mm -hmm. Right. We got the chew, the bounce. I can really pull on them. They're not completely shredding. This one's sour. Sour apple? Uh, they all have a little mm. bit of acid in them. But you that's another thing is you can add acid without having to worry about it affecting the gel. Mm -hmm. Agar can tolerate acid, but too much is going to help or it's going to break down that gel. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna end up with something that weeps a ton of water yeah. and then ends up uh, just not being pleasant to eat. Mm -hmm. The next one, very clear. These are yep. really beautiful. And what we did with they all of these great. is we actually uh, put them so in a cute. dehydrator just to try to get some excess water out of them. And mm -hmm. You can see how much they shrunk. The uh, the agar will lose a ton of water. Mm -hmm. So they're nice and clear. It also uh, dehydrating them gives a little bit texture, better texture on the outside. But you still get that. It almost like shatters into yeah. a million pieces. Like it doesn't have any real chew to it. As soon mm -hmm. as you bite into it, the gel kind of falls apart. So it's still got the flavor, but the flavor is also muted, right, yes. compared to um, the gelatin one that we just had. So this one is like a little blander. And this is about as far as I can very, stretch yeah. without it just And again, I feel like I'm splitting. The mouthfeel just isn't, it's just not right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you, if it's all you had and all you wanted to do is make some, some bears out of it, you could just know that they're not going to be the best, mm -hmm. you know, plant-based gummy bears that you could make. Yeah. Now we go to the one-to-one -one on the end. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I would switch it up a little bit on this because these look good. And mm -hmm. they're okay, but when you get to these, this is where we're using 70 grams of agar. This is so hard. <laughs> it is hard. I do not recommend eating it just because it will shatter into a, a million pieces and just feel like kind of very gritty and uh, um, almost I'll sandy when you eat it. And this is where, Blech. this I will not pull at all. I can just pull and it literally separates right away. Yeah, very, very no gritty. Stretch. Tastes terrible. <laughs> So there is a way yeah. to make things good with agar, but mm -hmm. it's not a one-to-one -one replacement, and you have to understand that and do a little bit of math to really nail down exactly where you want it. Yeah, and uh, the general uh, common thread I'm seeing here is generally you're using way less agar compared to gelatin. Yes. Right? So if you do, or like, where do I start? That's usually a pretty good point mm -hmm. to start. Um, so, oh, I totally forgot about the giveaway. Let's talk about the giveaway. This, this week's giveaway will be either um, some gelatin or some agar, depending on your preferences. And leave in the comments below another kitchen issue, something that you've always wondered about or you know, you've come across and you're like, I don't know how quite this works and you want us to kind of tackle it on one of these explainer videos. They're actually a lot of fun to do, so we enjoy showing the compare and contrast on camera for you so that you don't you know, cuss down on what you need to do at home to get the recipe exactly how you like it. Um, I believe that wraps it up for us, no? Yeah, okay. So. Well, until next week, from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie. And I'm Chef Scott.